I have a second channel, Cube Comp MTDX. Hey everybody, with Windows 7 support ending very soon, I'm uh, here in like the next couple weeks or so. Um, I figured I'd take the opportunity to uh, show you guys something interesting. So when Windows 7 was being developed, Microsoft released a release candidate copy of Windows 7 to the general public back in the spring of 2009 for people to install on the computers and try out and <clears throat> send back feedback and stuff like that. And of course, many of you guys remember Windows Vista. And getting to install <clears throat> the release candidate of Windows 7 and try it out brought some really nice things. It was really refreshing to see what Microsoft was doing with uh, Windows 7 development. So one thing to mention is Windows 7 release candidate build 7100 in comparison to the final build which I think was 7600 or 7601 with Service Pack 1 um, there was not that much different. It would, I mean there was some under the hood refinements and <clears throat> things like that but other than that they're very very similar one thing I should go ahead and mention is um, just to install this you have to set your computer's date and time back to uh, let's say December 2009 or any date before um, March 2010 or there's, there's a specific day in March that you must go before otherwise the system will refuse to run um, to my understanding it's called the uh, time bomb and once the system gets pa past that date um, it'll, no longer, it'll no longer want to work so what I did is I installed it and then I was able to, to actually disable the activation services <clears throat> and set the date and time back to the current date and time so just FYI I don't recommend running pre-release software like this uh, this is just for entertainment <clears throat> just to show you guys what this was <clears throat> and of course I'll be getting rid of it here pretty soon once I get done with this video so I'm running it on the uh, Plexi secondary drive the Plexi has two hard drives in it the secondary drive I use for uh, building up uh, Windows installations to uh, SysPrep and also for stuff like this once in a while so normally <clears throat> in the bottom right corner of the screen excuse me you would see Windows 7 Build 7100 um, evaluation copy. So as I mentioned, um, the 7100 build of Windows 7 is extremely similar to the uh, RTM build, which I, again I believe was 7600 or 7601 when you have Service Pack 1. And let's just for example launch a few things so there's paint <clears throat> for those who may remember paint uh, was refined quite a bit with Windows 7 um, in Windows Vista it was much like the Windows XP version which was getting quite dated and lacked a lot of functionality that the current version has and of course you can still find this in Windows 10 this was something I really liked for sure and just to show you guys, we are running build 7100. Yeah. Microsoft Windows version 6.1 build 7100. <clears throat> so, of course, again, there's paint. And when it comes to Windows 7, <clears throat> and this, is, this also applies for the final release of it. Windows 7 um, there were some things that they actually did not include in the operating system. For example, Windows Moon Maker, Windows Photo Gallery. <clears throat> These were items that you would normally download using the Windows Live Essentials uh, software package. Now as far as the Moon Maker goes, um, you could still run it. Um, you, could, you could strip the files out of a Vista installation. As a matter of fact, um, you can download those files in a convenient installer to run Movie Maker. Matter of fact, 
I use the Vista Moon Maker to edit my videos to this day, even on Windows 10. So, <clears throat> so there was a few things that they, they that they got rid of or changed in Windows 7. For example, here's the here's the magnifier. Now, this secondary drive in the Plexi is not the fastest hard drive. I'll say that much. Um, so there's a magnifier. We can get really, really, really close. And close that out. So I think that was exactly the same. I'm going to ask the final build. And of course, you get some bundled games. And <clears throat> matter of fact, I should mention that uh, you can download these on these Windows 10. So, yeah. So I, I can't remember for sure if it was. I think Windows 7 was the uh, last version of Windows to include these bundled in games like this. I think in Windows 8 and 8.1 and Windows 10 they were. You, I mean, in Windows 10 you had the you had the uh, the Microsoft Solitaire Collection app, but uh, you could just download these games off the internet and and regain functionality with them. And also, um, a lot of these games, I can't, I can't remember for sure. I think a lot of these were actually refined in Vista. I used to play this all the time. I never really played it right. I just, <laughs> a lot of people just, uh, a lot of people just click, 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 and hoping, hoping they don't hit a mine. But uh, yeah, a lot of these games uh, were refined with Windows Vista, and they got carried over to Windows Seven. <clears throat> so. Here's control panel, which again looks very similar to the final build of Windows 7. <clears throat> this isn't like uh, Windows 8 where the developer preview had a lot of noticeable differences. And I think I still have a copy of developer preview for Windows 8. I may have to do a video on that sometime. But uh, this is the control panel in <clears throat> Windows 7 7100. And... So yeah, this is a, this is a clean installation. And with Windows 7, when it was released, you got Windows, you got uh, Windows Internet Explorer uh, version 8, 8.0, IE8 more or less. And, uh, here's another interesting thing that I do miss having built into Windows: Windows DV, DVD Maker. Um, you could use this to write videos to DVD and play them back on a DVD player on your TV or what or what have you. But with Windows 10, they got rid of, I think, the codecs, and that was the end of it. <clears throat> this could have been the same for Windows 8 as well. So, for for those who use Windows 7 regularly, this is like looking at the final build of Windows 7. Again, um, so similar. They're almost identical, really. And, of course, the media player was revised with Windows 7, and... This is the same media player you get with Windows 10. So for those who remember, um, in Windows Vista you had the gadgets on the sidebar. Well, Windows 7 they got rid of the sidebar and instead had to just place the, place the gadgets. Um, on your desktop and some may know that Microsoft killed off uh, uh, the needed back-end services for these like for example the weather app and it hasn't the weather app itself hasn't worked in years and I think perhaps in newer I'm not, I can't say for certain but I think even a Windows update may have disabled the app all the uh, gadget altogether uh, you got the clock and of course the uh, system meter, all this good stuff. These were really handy little things back then, but they, you know, by the time <clears throat> when the 7 was out, they just weren't really all that popular anymore. Um, and of course, in Windows 8, they got replaced with the modern apps, and Windows 10, of course, you have your, um, you have your uh, store apps, which, you know, I don't use those much. But. So you have those. And for example, 
default programs, that's the same as the final devices and printers. <clears throat> okay, let's go ahead and fire up on this media center. Many of you guys know I really liked Windows Media Center. And it's unfortunate that they didn't really continue uh, working with this. And of course, on Windows 8, um, you could get it, but you had to get Windows 8 Pro and you had to also get the Windows Media Center, the Windows uh, Media Add ons pack or whatever it was called. And you're pretty much just getting a stripped down version of the Windows 7 Media Center, which was really a slap in the face of HCPC enthusiasts. Windows Media Center, um, back in its heyday, it was really a really nice thing. Um, you could use it, of course, to uh, you play your music, play your videos, and stuff like that. But the biggest thing about it was <clears throat> if you had a, a TV antenna or a cable service or what have you, and a TV tuner in your system, you could use your computer as a DVR. And <clears throat> some who watched my videos may remember there for a while I was using the Seton Infinity TV products, uh, the Infinity TV 4, and then later the Infinity TV 6, which were both cable card devices that allowed us to get digital cable service, HD digital cable service on Windows Media Center. But due to the due to the extreme DRM requirements of of cable cards and the cable company it was just such a pain in the butt um, I mean it was it was ridiculous but this is media center and <clears throat> let me see here yeah this was pretty much um, the final product that you would get in the uh, the, the RTM release of Windows 7 so yeah, in Windows 7, that was the, that was the uh, last operating system where they um, actually went in and did some refinements to Windows Media Center. And of course, Windows Media Center came out back when Windows XP was out. And then um, Windows Vista um, brought some changes to Media Center. And then Windows 7 brought the final changes that we all know, no, that we all happen to know about. Those who are interested in Media Center anyway. So yeah, <clears throat> and you can see Media Center is uh, attempting to download updates and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, I actually do have this thing online. And like I say, I don't really, I don't exactly recommend this, but I wanted to do it. I just wanted to do it to see to also try some different things, which I'm about to try here in a moment. Okay, so I've got some installation files here, and I'm curious to see which of these would work and which may not work so we have office star 2010 i'm not going to bother with that um, i'm going to try to install chrome let's let's try installing google chrome and see if we get any errors i also may give firefox a shot as well let's see if it even runs speaking of which let's go and bring up task manager so task manager and 107 it was uh, not exactly all as good as the product we get with uh, Windows 8 and Windows 10. Um, when Windows 8 came out, although there were so many things that we all hated about the operating system, uh, Windows 8 did bring a much more refined task manager. And it offered a lot more features. And, and you now it looks like Chrome's installing. That's interesting. So this is the older style task manager that looks a lot like what you would get in Windows XP and Windows Vista. <clears throat> so that's the task manager. So it looks like Chrome is going to run on this. Yes it is. That's interesting. <laughs> the newest version of Chrome will run on Windows 7 RC um, 7100. <laughs> that's kind of interesting. How about Firefox?
And this is why I had to run this with the current date and time because <clears throat> of course when you're connected to, to um, sites online things like that um, when your date and time is way off it doesn't like it for, especially for any secure sites and it's interesting we have two Google Chrome shortcuts on the taskbar there okay so Firefox is running on this and I figured why not let's go ahead and run the Windows um, Essentials 2012 installer. So I'm not going to install that. I'm not going to install that. Matter of fact, the only thing I'm going to even install is the Photo Gallery and the Moon Maker. See, this is why they. Uh, this is why Microsoft sort of offloaded some of these programs from being built into the OS and honestly I was never really a fan of this because you think of it like this these days uh, <clears throat> high-speed internet access is a lot easier to get and also in rural areas even if it's um, cellular um, but back in 2009 when Windows 7 came out a lot of people were still running on dial-up and having to download a software package like this would be extremely frustrating and annoying when you know they could have just included the uh, the software in the OS like they always have in the past. And um, really, to be honest, that's that's one of the things I did not like about Windows Seven was they stripped it down to the point where you'd have to download certain things off the internet to restore the same functionality, whereas in Vista. It was already there, and that's one of the things about Windows Vista I liked. It was um, it was pretty well bundled. I mean, you had a lot of stuff built right into the operating system. You didn't have to go online and download this and download that because, well, Vista already had set application there. Like for example, Movie Maker, Photo Gallery, what have you, Windows Calendar. I mean, I think Seven might have that. I don't know for sure, but. Windows 7 did get rid of a little, maybe it don't have it, but Windows 7 did get rid of a lot of various things that uh, Vista did have. And, um, one thing I, should, I guess I should also mention is in Vista, um, I remember back in the home premium version of Vista, they got rid of the Windows Fax and Scan. Used to be like a Windows XP. Home Edition, I think, had it, but Windows Vista Home Premium did not have it. So, when I was running Vista Home Premium back in the day, I had to download a third-party application to send faxes. Whereas in Windows 7, they restored that functionality back to the uh, Home Premium version. And this is technically Windows 7 Ultimate, by the way. Um, so, we're going to let this install, and then we'll continue. Okay, so it looks like we can't get this to install because there's a conflicting program, SQL Lite running, you know, I've tried it multiple times and it's just not going to work it seems. So, we'll go ahead and skip on that, but, yeah, I'll I, I tell you, I'm really surprised that, uh, that, um, <clears throat> we was able to install what we did, you know, the, uh, for example, Firefox and Chrome, those were able to install. So, I figured let's, before we wrap this up, let's go ahead and look at uh, Personalize. Let's look at the desktop backgrounds you get. Okay, so, of course, in the final RTM, they replaced it with the uh, logo, you know, the one that has the Windows logo in the center, rather than the beta fish. You know, I, I consider Windows 7 to be the final version of Windows where you could really go in and customize things. Now, Windows 10 and Windows 8, yeah, you could customize colors and things like that, but I think the era interface that was that was started with Vista and brought to Windows 7, it was just, it was nice. And, of course, there was a feature that was, I think, introduced in 7. And, of course, let's not forget about that. And, of course, the start menu. But, yeah, um... 
I'd say a good majority of um, what you would get in the release candidate would be practically the same as the final build. So, I think we're going to wrap this up. So yeah, uh, this is one of the seven build 7100. This was the um, pre-release that got everybody really excited for one of the seven. Um, and of course, I don't think you know, with Vista, I don't think Microsoft actually did any sort of pre-releases like public releases. Um, I think what what got Microsoft in the idea of doing this was when is Vista such horrible reception? Um, you know, if they would have done a a pre-release to the public um, perhaps they could have got a lot more feedback and could have better and um, they could they could have uh, did a better job with releasing Windows Vista back when it was released um, well we of course know how wonderful that went it was pretty dang awful so anyways I think that wraps it up for this video hope you guys enjoyed it thanks for watching well, everybody, that's it for this video, but don't forget, there's a lot more interesting stuff on the channel to check out. Also, if this is your first time visiting this channel, feel free to subscribe to keep your channel, and also don't forget to tick the bell so that way you'll get notified of new video posts. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, but if you really didn't like it, there is the alternative option available as well. Also, feel free to check out my second channel, CubeComp MTDX. There you'll find videos about bicycling, weather, elevator tours, and all sorts of other neat, interesting stuff. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Feel free to come back, and thank you for your support.